Welcome to the API The Docs podcast. My name is Laura Vosch, and this is another special episode, one of four, bringing you the recording of my conversation with the Dev Portal Awards jurors at the Awards Gala event last December. In this episode, I asked what awards jurors Marco Spinello, senior technical writer, Kruno Golubic, technical writer at the Developer Experience team at Memgraph, Richard Smedley, principal technical writer at Couchbase, and Ryan Clifford, platform group product manager at Spendesk. So I asked what they think about the present and future state of developer portals. In this episode, you will hear how paths and use cases can help a user journey into complexities and why you can also consider it a part of API design, how you abstract the complexity that your user shouldn't have to think about. It is a recurring advice from the awards jurors to not to be a carbon copy, but get built the features that are meant specifically for your portal and business context. Of course, I couldn't agree more. Have you thought of experiencing a docs portal as a set of interlocking journeys? Choose your own adventure style. You can also find a summary article of the awards results on pronovix.com. Look for Best Developer Portals 2023. With deepest gratitude to the jurors and all people working on building excellent developer portals. Enjoy the interview. Marco is Senior Technical Writer at Sanity. Richard uh, Smedley is Principal Technical Writer at Couchbase. Kruno Golubic is Technical Writer at MemeGraph. And Ryan Clifford, uh, Platform Group Product Manager at Spendesk. Kruno, let me ask you first, what certain aspects uh, did you see more coming into focus of developer portals um, that were not so much in the spotlight before, or not so much featured? I would say that uh, probably the things related to the first touch point and uh, getting started with different programming languages, but uh, not in a manner that you would have like one long page, you know, or jump between tabs to check out everything that you needed if you're trying to find your right language, the one that you are using. But uh, portals seem to be more oriented to allowing users, you know, to select their preferences and then they just follow you and offer you the right things at the right time. So I would say that is that is the, the biggest change that I've seen. Richard? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd agree a lot with what's already been said about the, um, the time to wow, the getting started uh, and so on. Um, one thing... I, I liked, which perhaps wasn't seen everywhere, and, and many portals have a, a small surface area for the problem they're tackling, but even in a small one, uh, everybody is dealing with complexity, and um, I, I think it was mentioned earlier about things were, uh, Fabrizio mentioned, things were more cohesive in a, in a lot of places. It, it, it's, you know, we, we're all dealing with something where we can never get it perfect and never get it right. But there's so much complexity there. And when you can find enough paths through for enough different users and different use cases uh, and do it you know, really well, yeah, that's, that's great to see. Ryan, what do you think about that? Well, it's interesting. It pinged a light bulb in my mind, Richard, what you were saying around complexity. Uh, and something and links to something that I was seeing more and more of when it comes to dev portals is that focus on like what I would call more of like API design. Um, so yes, agree absolutely with everything around use cases, API references. But what I am seeing, which is really positive, is this attention to how am I designing APIs. And the reason why I, a light bulb went off when you say complexity is because part of API design is how do I abstract complexity that my users shouldn't even have to think about. Um, and it kind of brings on this topic of, is APIs uh, an art or a science? And maybe I argue more it's an art because I've seen people try to create a science around how do you create the best experience around APIs and how to consume them, but it's so dependent on your context. So what I love seeing um, in this year, uh, and kind of increasingly so over the number of years, is a focus on best API uh, design, uh, which is not a category actually, maybe it should be, but um, usage of it as well. So um, yeah, interesting. I, I'm quite hopeful to see how do 
how does the future look like and how do you make it easier to actually get to zero to hero to use a, an overused term um, with getting up and running with your apis more automatically or honestly and marco as a technical writer and maybe not just as technical writer do you see certain aspects of developers more in focus lately yes well complexity and api design the two points that richard and um chris brought and ryan sorry brought up <clears throat> sorry excuse me uh made me think about uh, a couple of trends that may notice as a tech writer on the subject of complexity uh in my mind um i'm seeing developer portals more and more getting more and more similar to very crowded airports with lots of people who are tired and don't know where to go so signage has become really important uh, we need to funnel developers um, towards the documentation the set of documentation the set of tools that are really relevant to them one side effect of that uh, is that people have become more impatient and instead of going through uh, a whole book or going through a bunch of documentation first and getting acquainted and learning the, the concept and then trying to tinker with uh, with a tool, an, an API or a web SDK, uh, they want to see results uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and so we, um, as mm, let's say, mm, yeah, service um, producers and content producers and developer, and developer portals, uh, we need to take that into consideration. So we need to consider really docs as as an enabler, as an enabling tool, and not as uh, a nice artifact that lives out there and that is useful in an, in an abstract way. It's, um, it's really something that people pick up, they do the work that they need to do, and then they put it back in the toolbox. Um, so they need to be much more focused than they used to be. And they need to uh, be able to um, yeah, track users to provide personalized content. And that is something that is becoming uh, more mainstream. And what would you like to drop from the airport of docs? I'm saying something very unpopular, but I would say Next.js. It's over engineered. All right. So my thing may be controversial. I'm trying to think it through. Um, so, and I can argue both ways with this. You see developer portals becoming a lot more, I would say like mainstream and then more providers are having a need for APIs and dev portals, which is great. Uh, you start to see people using similar tools and different approach, uh, the same approaches to how they deliver this. Um, great in terms of familiarity, in terms of a developer goes to one portal, they then go to another one, and it's very similar, I know how to navigate this, but there's also that risk of, are you becoming, uh, like, how do you distinguish yourself? Um, because they're all looking very similar. Do you have any USP? Um, and where I've seen people, um, some of the nominees accelerate um, and kind of distinguish themselves is, how do I take a, a tool, and there's many different tools out there you can leverage, but how do I add little custom elements to make it a little bit more unique? Uh, and that could be in, say, the documentation that you create um, and the way that you even do your technical writing, or it could be actual features or the design. It could be a combination of that. So it's this idea of like trying not to be a carbon copy, um, but equally you want to keep the fact that if someone comes to your portal, you want to be able to navigate it easily because it's familiar. Um, so that's one thing that I've seen. And something that's come up even in some of the judging was um, calling out the people who have really understood the context um, and have purposely built certain features because it means something to the dev portal. They're not just throwing a feature because it's nice to have a feature on a dev portal, um, but it doesn't add much value. They're actually going, well, is it easy enough to navigate my portal with a few filters here? Do I really need this extra ability to search specifically on a product? Um, like, so it's finding how do you build the right features for your need? And something that comes to mind in my own experience is sometimes I've used, and I have a very specific example, use documentation as a crutch for bad API design. When really what we should have done is if we build the API, uh, in an intuitive way, you wouldn't have needed as much documentation to explain how to use it. But we originally went with, we're going to give all this documentation to explain how to use the API. And then eventually we learned we need to make the API more usable. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, try not to be a carbon copy. Um, 
and build features that are actually meant for your portal and for your context and for your business, not just for the sake of it. Richard, what would you drop? And I do see that you like things to be in order. And Fabrizio remarked earlier on all your O'Reilly books. Thank you for <laughs> seeing them. Um, <laughs> what, what would you drop uh, materials to, to make them better? Well, um, it, it's not that I don't disagree with the point just now about um, us not having to document around poor design. But I, I, I think that does fall into that science fiction future wish for you know something a long way away because I, I can't see software really getting there all, all of the companies we work for are, are moving much too quickly it's it's one of those fields where you know people will just keep making software which isn't quite there yet and we will always be documenting around it probably faster than ai can do it for us as well fortunately uh yeah so what would uh i drop i i think this one might be partly a personal prejudice but uh, i i'm not alone amongst uh developers in not liking the way you always have to sign up for almost everything and you know you, you it, there's very good reasons away even away from the sales funnel why um you, you want anyone using your apis for especially in certain sectors to to, to at least be a known quantity for you but eddie had the kind of um sandbox or playground or, or whatever that some sites have where you can you can just not have to sign up and just just have a go and and not feel that you, you've suddenly become a unit in you know into that sales funnel very much in line also with um uh what the jurors said that also last year uh, and it's getting better but they're still not there i recall anthony saying if one more portal asks for his bank card he's gonna lose his cool <laughs> But uh, luckily, that's a, that's a going out practice now. It's more like, okay, your phone number. Um, Kruno, um, what would you rather the industry let go of when it comes to portals? Something similar to what uh, Richard said, you know, actually it comes down to you expect to have a working example or something, and then it ends up being broken because you didn't, do something like you know create account and get out even test key just to test if this is the right solution for you so if you're offering something to me and you say oh you can test it right away then please do make that example work right away you know otherwise uh, for me it shows i don't know uh, uh, like a lack of compassion for the user because for somebody who is developing that portal and who is working on it, they're maybe even too close and they're always logged in. They have a bunch of keys and everything works out of the box because they're using it on day to day. They they have conceived it in a certain way. But when you have your first contact with, with that site, uh, your first impression, impression might be just, wait, this isn't working, you know. They said, choose a language, test it, and I'm getting an error that I'm not logged in, I'm not authorized to do something. So I think it would be better to hide those examples until you log in, so you, you don't even try it out. The second thing that uh, I would like to get rid of, but I'm not sure how, are those extra, extra long pages that you can scroll for hours until you get to the bottom. To the bottom of the page yes there is a lot of information on api yes there is a lot of options there is a lot of things that you need to check out but maybe with some kind of a division or a logical you know use of menus or something like that it, it could be done better we have seen some sites that had multiple levels of navigation and they tackled that problem with with new level of navigation and it worked great you know so uh in in documentation no i i don't think it's it is impossible to do above the fold you know that the most important information is above the fold but please don't dig it 80 folds be below you know that that is like a big no-no for me thank you um and if you take out your crystal ball and your science fiction googles what and what what would you like to see or how how could you possibly imagine like where is this going i would i would like to see uh documentation 
integrated into the developer tools. That is one thing. And the second thing that I would really like to is to be able to have a conversation with the documentation in in spoken words, you know, and to hear the documentation being read out to me. I think that we, this would also be good from the point of accessibility, you know, to design docs with, with that in mind, that it should be done in such way so that it can be read uh, to the users that are using it. So I would say more accessibility and better integration with, with existing developer tools so that I don't need to have two or three windows stacked up, opened up one next to another. So I can just say, hey, can you now tell me what is the next parameter that I should enter to accomplish this? Do you know something about it? So I think that that would be a nice thing to have. Richard, let me ask you a second. Yeah, I, I think it was touched on partially by um, the other jurors earlier where, where people were talking about the stories and, and how different use cases were addressed and where that meets the complexity of it, this this whole range of, of people we have using our docs not just the personas we we, we put in for the, the beginner and the, the experienced user but everyone in between who's coming in from all different ways some sort of uh and and we're supposed to be looking for future here but i think go back 40 years if anyone remembers the choose your own adventure books where you, you would say you know t turn to page 56 if you want to attack the dragon or if, you, if you're sensible and you want to run away turn to page 45 and uh that combined with the uh some of the interactivities and choices people have been talking about it, it it, 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 it's one way of, of, of taming the complexity is just not having the the, the purely two-dimensional view into the docs of the nav even a two-level nav done well but um, just just this whole interlocking set of journeys many of which you could uh, make yourself uh, but not easy. <laughs> Fabrizio had a spin on <laughs> the adventure. Um, Marco um, what do you see in future possibilities or parallel worlds of the portals? Uh, well, Kuno said it in really clear and, and, and easy words. Um, I see the same. Uh, I'm starting very in a very crude or rudimentary way to do the same. I, I use ChatGPT to do a lot of stuff, uh, to, to spar when, uh, when, I, when I have pieces of code that I say, oh, I don't know what it is. Uh, Chat GPT to the rescue, and I managed to figure it out. Um, so, documentation that becomes really, really much more interactive, um, and that is where you need it, which is, as Bruno said, in the product. Um, it's right now. I understand that we make portals to to pro to provide one place for people to go and and learn how to use our tools. Um, but it's, uh, it's still a little bit annoying to have to go somewhere else. Most developers just want to stay within their environment, which is, which could be the terminal or or their favorite ID. So that's that's the place where the doc should should be. That's where it helps them. Um, and so AI and LLMs are are helping us to get there. Um, another thing that I would like in the future is really uh, I, I I want accessibility to become just part of the standard features not something that you add after years and years uh, because you start thinking about it or become or because the concept of accessibility becomes more of a, of a business concern um, we we really need to um, to take it as part of the product when we develop uh, when we start putting a developer portal together we should think about uh, how to serve users who have different kinds of needs and uh, there can be physical needs that are different, but there can also be um, needs in terms of different knowledge, neurodivergence, and we need to be able to plan for that and plan accordingly and provide some paths that work for them as well. Um, I'm, I've become more involved into it, more interested into it because, uh, because of friends and colleagues uh, who um, digest and consume knowledge uh, in a different way. Say, so, darn it. This is wrong. They don't have to go through such lengths before they get to the point that matters to them. Um, so, 
yeah, accessibility and really true interactivity are my two future things that I want to happen. I want them to happen now, basically. That future should be here right now. Thank you. Ryan, how, how, how do you see the possibilities, if only it was possible? Yeah, um, I think one around use cases and being able to kind of come to a dev portal, customize a use case based off of your needs in a way which it self-generates, but then taking it, so sort of like that choose your own adventure as well for use cases, uh, but then that next step of how do you articulate that use case and how to get up and running in a really simple way. Like my measure of how good you are in explaining APIs and how to get started would be, could you take a non-technical person um, and could you get them in a low code or a no code way to under make an API call um, and then get started with maybe the basics of a use case. And if you can do that, that's a really good sign. I actually have my own objective or kind of goal at my current company to say, I want every single person in this company to be able to not only know what an API is, but also make an API call on our dev portal. And I've got that goal and I want to get every single person to do it. And I've got a fun way to try and get them to do that as well. Um, so there's use cases being able to customize them. Then it's making sure that any type of persona can then understand to certain levels um, how to enable it. Yes, you're, you're never going to get a non-technical person to be able to develop a production-ready thing, but can they do the first beginning parts of it? Can they understand the value that's coming out of here and how I would build it? Um, and that actually plays to the fact that dev portals, I know it's developer portals, but you're not just talking to developers. You are talking to maybe product managers or, or business people and non-technical people who are involved in that um, purchasing cycle of what solution are we going down, what provider are we using? So being able to customize for that. And then my last point, um, Funny enough, we've all kind of mentioned it without even, you know, coordinating it, but it is on accessibility. Um, but for me, it's how can we do some real novel work on accessibility where we think holistically? So it's not just about coming to a dev portal, being able to see it with screen readers, et cetera, but going, well, the next step is I need to then integrate with that API. I need to start building. And you mentioned before earlier, I think it may be, Kruno may have mentioned your developer tools as well and being able to, to self-generate stuff. And I just think that's super interesting to see what's this end-to-end -end experience when it comes to accessibility and going that step beyond. Um, and just linking in with, I guess, Marco's point as well and both Richard's points around choose your own adventures, different types of accessibility and diversity needs. Wouldn't it be really nice to have a whole dev portal experience, which could be a choose your own adventure and you could maybe pick a setting and the whole dev portal is changed based off of your accessibility needs. So it could be actually, I need something which is less cluttered and I need to be really focused on stuff and I can change everything about a dev portal to be really clean and pulled back. Or I might go the other end that I need it to all be focalized with screen readers, et cetera. Or, you know, it's just this idea of how do you go that next step forward being quite holistic in the way you're thinking but that's that's the things on my mind how can we get to that sooner and make that future the near future thank you very much and it's kind of pushing it but um do either of you have words for future uh jurors and please don't say it's horrible at the <laughs> <laughs> why is it interesting to look at other portals not just your competitors and your own because you take a look at some things that otherwise you might have missed because it's out of the scope, you know, with everyday work. Either, whether I like it or not, I do live in a bubble, you know, because you're surrounded by your day-to-day -day tasks. And it is nice, you know, to see what happens in related similar areas and what people are doing and building because you never know what your next task, job, assignment might be because you might end up integrating that system that you have learned about with something that you're already using. So it is a nice thing. And I've seen some really amazing things and I've shared the ideas with the team that I'm working on. I've said, this we must try out. You know, we have to see how we can leverage this. So because of knowledge sharing and experience, you know, and talking and working with all of you people, it, 
it was really a great experience. So, you know, as, as they say, would recommend five stars. Thank you for um, all your kind words and um, your opinions, uh, which I'm sure that uh, felt feels a bit hazardous to say it out loud, but I hope that it, 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 it helps a lot of people to, to come to a decision whether to build something or to drop something. And maybe, maybe like, oh, yeah, that, that's in sync with what I'm thinking. Thank you very, very much. Um, and it was a really great pleasure for me to, to, be, to be listening uh, to your conversations. It was actually an honor. So thank you for that. Can thank I, you so much. Can I quickly add one more thing around the benefits of being a judge? And this is a credit to yourself, Laura and Christoph. Um, it's been such a rigorous process that I've come away from this with tons of inspiration from others, but also just the way that you have conducted the Dev Portal Awards had made me go back to some of the stuff I'm doing at work and saying, we could be more rigorous here, we could be better here. So just a big thank you for all the work that- Yes, same, I, I'd, I'd agree with those points. And then just one trivial point extra why people, you know, you, you get to see so many sites which are both like yours and not like yours and, and, and people doing, things well and inspiration but there's also the times you see things which you think well we're already doing this or we're even doing it slightly better and uh, as docs people you spend a lot of time just looking wrong and what you need to fix and sometimes if you see somebody else's you know level with you or, or you're even ahead of them that's that's really nice you know just just to step outside your your own misery and task list so you know one selfish reason to try this <laughs> some self-empathy <laughs> um thank you very much for embracing um the um the work and effort and the benefits of being a juror um the the part about the process and and the, the evaluation that is getting better uh, the kudos goes to my colleagues um and the big part uh ux researchers uh, who are putting a lot of effort into this and they are very very methodical um <laughs> i'm just keeping up with them um and to uh jurors of past years who were um trusting me with telling me how this could be done much much better and that is very helpful also thank you for listening to the api the docs podcast we thank our colleagues at pronovis developer portals for letting us work on this and the entire api community for all of the mutual support and sharing of experiences that you give each other do you have a topic or guest that you would like us to spotlight drop a note at podcast at pronovix.com if you go to the website, api.docs.org, you can find the recaps and recordings of past API.docs conferences, as well as the upcoming program. Until next time, be well.